It's a beautiful day today and a beautiful day to read some more horrifying but also fun Reddit stories and I hope you guys are excited. Nez was sitting at the window looking super cute so I felt like I needed to include that in the episode. She's so cute. If you guys enjoyed today's episode make sure you subscribe if you want to and let's get into it. Enjoy guys. Am I the gay hover becoming indifferent towards my wife after discovering her affair? My 30 male, wife 34 female, and I have been together for 8 years, 5 of them married. I thought we were the kind of people that could tell each other any problem. I loved her deeply and I always believed that she felt the same way about me. Like many couples, we had our ups and downs, but I never thought it could lead to infidelity. 4 months ago, I started noticing changes in her behaviour. She was more distant, always glued to the phone, and avoiding our conversations. You know, the typical thing about a cheating person. Well, one day I came across a message on her phone that confirmed what I feared the most, she was seeing somebody else. It was like a punch in the stomach. I felt anger, sadness, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. But instead of confronting her right away, I decided to wait. My main reason was to protect myself in a possible divorce. If I was going to face this situation, I wanted to have solid evidence. So I spent the next two months gathering messages and photos and anything else I could use if things got legally difficult. During those two months, I pretended normality while the pain piled up. I watched her act like everything was okay, and with each passing day, my feelings for her faded. The love I once felt was replaced by indifference. Difference. If anybody says that love for somebody doesn't go away, well, that's not entirely true. When I finally gathered all the evidence, I confronted her. I showed her everything I knew, and although she tried to deny it at first, she finally admitted that she'd been having an affair. She said it was a mistake, that she still loved me, and that she wanted to work things out. Oh my god, she's only saying that because she got caught. This stuff is so bad. OP, you might never have found out about this. And she never would have told you either. But by then, I didn't feel anything anymore. I didn't scream, I didn't cry, I didn't even get angry. I simply told that it was okay, that we could get a divorce and then we could each move on with our life. My lack of emotion baffled her. She said that my indifference was cold and cruel. No! <laughs> oh, that's a bit rich coming from a cheater, isn't it? And that if I had truly loved her, I should have fought to save our marriage. Oh my god, not this crap again. Which was ironic coming from her, but the truth was that I did love her very much. Only after two months of living with the betrayal in silence, I just didn't care. Am I the a hole for becoming indifferent towards my wife after discovering her affair? OP, no, not even a little bit. I'm sad for you, OP, that you feel like you ever need to be asking that. Of course you're not the a-hole. And also, of course you're gonna feel like that. You have been betrayed, OP. You're with somebody who has no respect for you. You're naturally gonna wanna get away from them, OP. And holy f that stuff that they say is so wild. Oh, if you had truly loved me, you should have fought to save our marriage. Can you please explain to me why you should fight for somebody who is willing to cheat on you? Oh yeah, nobody should do that. <laughs> How bloody ridiculous. You never would have found out about this either, OP. Take the trash out, OP. And by trash, I mean your wife. I know I said it in yesterday's episode, but holy f some people have some audacity. Imagine being a cheater, betraying your partner, and then saying, oh, well, if you truly loved me, then you should have fought to save our marriage. Like, hey, when were you fighting to save your marriage? When you were banging somebody else? What the hell are you talking about? I just don't understand how that comes out of somebody's mouth, and they're not like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> they either have absolutely no self-awareness, or they feel like they can never do wrong or something. It's so baffling. Yeah, the top comment, not the gay hole. Remember this. The only reason that she's sorry is because she got caught. A million percent. Oh, that's so frustrating. You don't owe her anything. And you sure as hell don't owe her fighting for the marriage. God, some people are hilarious. This comment says, not the a-hole. You're not the a-hole for becoming emotionally attached after discovering your wife's affair. Your feelings are a natural response to a profound betrayal of trust. While your wife may have been hoping for a different reaction, you're not obligated to fight for a relationship that she damaged with infidelity. Your choice to protect yourself legally was prudent. Moving forward, focus on healing and what's best for you. Consider seeking counselling to process your emotions and the end of your marriage in a healthy way. Yeah, could not agree more. Also this comment, and if she really loved you, she wouldn't have some other dude. Yeah, pretty simple, isn't it? Oh no, why aren't you fighting for our marriage? <laughs> oh, I can't help but laugh. I don't understand how somebody has the audacity to even say that. This comment says she's your typical cheater, manipulative and gaslighting, not the a-hole. Yeah, of course you're not the a-hole, OP, and I'm sorry that you felt like you needed to even be asking that. You haven't done anything. She's projecting all of this onto you, OP. Post number two is called, am I the a-hole for ditching a wedding that I, female 20, was the maid of honor in because the bride 
Terrified Female 22, tried to set me up with the best man, male 28. I was supposed to be the maid of honor at a wedding a few weeks ago. I ended up just leaving and going home to my boyfriend of six years after the bride and groom tried to set me up with the best man. When my friend got engaged last year, I was excited for her and even more excited when she asked me to be the maid of honor. As invites went out though, she asked me to not bring my boyfriend to the wedding. Wow, okay, what? I was really upset about that, but my boyfriend talked me down telling me that weddings were expensive and they were probably trying to keep the guest list down and they didn't really know him so it would be fine for me to go without him. That made sense to me so I didn't say or do anything after that and I just continued with helping as I could as the maid of honor. Nothing else really concerning happened again until a couple of days before the wedding. The bride asked me to give the best man a ride to and from the wedding which was about a four hour drive. Okay so hold up a second. The bride knows that you have a boyfriend and they're still doing this. Is the bride a piece of crap OP? That's so gross and so disrespectful. I thought it was just part of it as he was a veteran and had his own issues surrounding that. So I gave him a ride up to the Airbnb that we were staying at before the wedding. The whole time he tried to make conversation that was just weird to me and I was just not into it and I was trying my best to be nice to him. At the Airbnb with everybody, I immediately noticed that things were off. All of the other bridesmaids had their boyfriends there and things were really awkward when I found out that I was in a room with the best man. The next day before the rehearsal dinner, the bride and groom cornered me in a room to say that the best man was an incredible guy and that I was blowing him off without really giving him a chance. They know that you've got a boyfriend. These people are so awful. I told him, well, of course not. I've got a serious long-term boyfriend, which y'all specifically told me not to bring. Then the bride cut in and told me that, well, that really isn't that serious since he hasn't proposed in so long. Where do you get off, bride? <laughs> oh, the audacity. How dare they even feel like they can say that? I argued back that was because we were both still in school. We continued arguing for a little while before I finally just said, forget it. I'm going home. I got called all sorts of awful names going out of the room and I packed up and left. I got a lot of calls on the way home, which I ignored until my boyfriend called. Apparently the bride called him and told him that I left for no reason and he called me to check on me. I told him everything that happened and he was kind of dumbstruck by it all. Anyway, after the wedding, I've had the bride, the groom and a lot of their friends call or message me telling me how horrible of a person I was for just leaving the night before the wedding for no reason. No reason? Are you joking? You're not the horrible person here, OP. None of which were receptive to my side of things and it's starting to worry me that maybe I overreacted by leaving like that. Anyway, am I the a-hole? Edit, I started dating my boyfriend in high school. He's two years older than me and my friends don't really know my boyfriend since he doesn't go to the same school as us. And when we do see each other, it's usually halfway between our schools. Oh no, that was infuriating. OP, these are pieces of garbage people. How dare they do that? And then on top of that, call you horrible. I'm pretty confident that you don't need these people in your life, OP. Imagine trying to break up a couple like this. The bride absolutely sucks, OP. But so do the rest of them too who are backing them up. Wow, the post on the subreddit today is so frustrating. OP, you need to say exactly what they did and you need to stress how messed up that is and how gross and disrespectful that is, mainly of the bride. And you need to tell anybody who tells you otherwise, OP. OP said in the comments, my boyfriend has told me that I didn't do anything wrong and he's glad that I made the decision that I did. It's just all the other people who don't know what happened contacting me that are making me feel like I messed up. Yeah, and how ridiculous is that? They don't even know the full story, but they're happily messaging you and saying awful stuff and making you feel like crap. Oh, that's so sad. This comment says, not the a-hole. Good for you, OP. What they did was incredibly creepy and dangerous. You're 20. He's 28, first of all, and a total stranger to you. It is not okay that they put you in the same room. I would have left immediately as soon as I found that out. They disrespected you and your relationship. Your boyfriend was even kind enough to encourage you to even go to the wedding without him. You did not overreact. You reacted appropriately. Later than I would have. This internet stranger is proud of you for standing up for yourself and getting yourself out of that terrible situation. Yeah, same here, OP. These people are not your friends and they try to pimp you out, essentially. Yeah, they're not your friends, OP. Like, if this is a friend, you do not need them. And the bride was so rude from the start. Like, hey, can you be the maid of honor? Yeah, but don't bring your boyfriend, though. He's not allowed to come because I'm going to try and set you up with a different guy because I've got no respect for you or your partner or your relationship. Like, are you serious? Like, I don't feel like this is something you can do unless you are sort of a garbage person. It's not like, oh, whoopsie, you know, they're a little bit out of line. No, like that's awful. And I feel like you have to already kind of be an a-hole to do stuff like this. The top comment says, not the a-hole. This is so bizarre and I feel bad for the poor best man who probably has no idea that OP has a boyfriend. Yeah, that's such a good point too. I feel like they wouldn't have told them. But even if she was single and it was a legitimate setup, I find it so creepy that OP was expected to share a room with a man that she doesn't know and she wasn't even told about it first. There's also a pretty decent age gap to set a 20-year-old up with a 28 year old without even telling her it's a setup and it's 
hardly shocking that the boyfriend hasn't proposed. Six years is a long time to be dating. Except they would have started going out as kids. They're still young and they're starting their life together. Marriage could be years off. Yeah, that wasn't even a good point to begin with. Like, what did they say? Like, it's not serious because he hasn't proposed? OP, I would seriously cut these people out of your life. The bride especially is not going to have a good impact on your life, OP. But yeah, like that comment said, feel bad for the best man too, who probably didn't even know what was going on. Or at least didn't know that OP had a boyfriend. It's a different story if the best man did know that they had a boyfriend, but I feel like the bride wouldn't have told that to the best man. The second top comment says, not the a-hole. To be honest, that bride sounds like she was setting you up to cheat on your boyfriend or be sexually assaulted in your room at most. It's freaking unbelievable. And she lost all loyalty from you when she actively tried to f up your life. Knowing that she was wrong, she tried to tell everybody that you left for no reason. A tactic of all guilty people to control the crowd and pressure you to apologize. Please tell me that your boyfriend does support you in the decision. Don't worry about what these jerk friends are saying to you because number one, they're jerks and number two, who wants friends that do this or think that what they did was okay? Yeah, I didn't even think about that either. But yeah, either way, the bride was actively trying to mess up your life and yeah, wanted you to cheat on your boyfriend. Does it get any more scummy than that? I don't know if it does. Don't be be friends with these people OP, especially the bride. Like think about how messed up that is. The next one is called, am I the gay hoff for refusing to eat all of my wife's food? So I 37 male and my wife 35 female are cooling down from an argument right now based around me telling her point blank to make less food in the future or I'm going to continue not eating it. The backstory is pretty simple and nothing to the point of threatening our marriage or anything. I'm getting up in years and as a basketball player, these knees are starting to go. I had eventually reached around 89 kilos, 196 pounds at five foot nine tall around the tail end of COVID. I knew that I had to make a change and at least get down to my pre-COVID weight around 74 kilos or 163 pounds. Now I'm actually all the way down to 70 kilos. I'm happy with my progress and I'm set on making this my new normal moving forward until old age and beyond. But my wife isn't thrilled that I've shed all the weight. There aren't love handles that she can play with anymore. The most devastating for her is that I don't eat nearly as much as I used to. We trade off cooking duties every day and when it's me, I usually make just enough. But when she cooks, there's always enough food for another full plate of food. My wife is tiny so she can't eat it and I'm now a dude who doesn't eat it either. I always say that we can save it and have it for dinner the next day. I don't eat breakfast and lunches are provided by my work and while that did work for a while eventually the leftovers just ended up going in the bin and she'd ask me to cook something new instead. Although it's been fine more or less she doesn't hold back on commenting. To her men should be eating seconds or thirds. It's just the Japanese way to her. She's Japanese and we live in the country and she's always recalled her father enthusiastically asking for seconds or thirds. She's feeling more and more ashamed that her husband doesn't like her cooking, but I do. Her cooking is fantastic and I eat as much as I can when she makes it. It's just that she makes too much now. We've had talks about her portion sizing, but it's always gotten back around to letting her cook her way. Yeah, but you can't be expected to just eat a whole bunch of food every day, OP. That's not how that works. And if you've had to be super mindful of your calories, which it sounds like you definitely have, you can't be going way over your calories at dinner time every single day. This all boiled over earlier tonight when she asked if I wanted second servings of karage, and I said, nah, I'm way too full, in which she countered by saying, are you just going to throw away all the chicken then? That's so wasteful. What are you talking about? You're the one who cooked it all. I knew I was giving the wrong response immediately as the words left my mouth, but I still said it. You are wasting all the chicken. I told you to make less food. I've been telling you for months. I don't see you eating the chicken either. You're the one wasting money and time making all this extra food that I'm not going to eat and that's not going to change. No, I feel like you're right, OP. Now she's in bed after a cry and nothing from me gave her any comfort. And now I'm downstairs writing this. I know my response was wrong in the moment, but have I been an a-hole about this entire weight loss journey? At least as it pertains to my wife's cooking. Should I have just sucked it up and ate all of her food? No, I don't think so, OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole. You've spoken up about this plenty. At this point, she should need to eat any leftovers that she produces. Hopefully this isn't the case, but she may be subconsciously sabotaging your weight loss. OP said, I don't think it's sabotage. It's not the type of person that she is. She's just a bit set in her ways and expectations on what and how much I should eat. Now, I gotta admit, you planting that seed into my mind has me thinking. Yeah, like, is she supportive of you in this OP? It doesn't sound like it. Why should you have to eat all the food? Of course that doesn't make sense, and you're definitely not the a-hole. This comment says, not the a-hole. You definitely need to approach it from a compassionate angle. Sit down with her once she's cooled off and tell her how you know that she must be feeling, that it must feel like you don't love her cooking, something that she's super proud of. Tell her that you know her dad always loved her mum's cooking, and that that was always something really special, a sign of a happy household. And then tell her you're absolutely a thousand percent not 
eating lesser fat cooking because it's not delicious and that it is a struggle to not eat seconds because it's so good. Tell her that you want to lose weight because you want to be around and healthy for you both when you're old. As amazing as her cooking is, being strong and active in your old age so that you can both still have great mobility and independence is the most important thing. And then maybe you can both compromise a little. You have a cheat day once a week. She can join you on a walk or in a little workout or something. OP said that was beautifully put and probably more smoothly set out than I would have done. So I'm definitely going to steal a few lines for the conversation in the morning. I really hope that we can get to a point that we come to an understanding. As for joining me, she already does her own thing with yoga and is already in excellent shape. A former rugby player as a youth, but she has no interest in hitting an actual barbells and dumbbells gym with me. She's gone a few times, but it just isn't her thing. And I can respect that. No, you're not the a-hole OP. But also, your wife is not an a-hole either. I'm sure that you guys will figure it out. And yeah, all the best with it OP. The next one's called, am I the a-hole for snapping at my sister that she'll choke on her jealousy one day? Hi, I'll try to keep this as short as I can. I promise I'll clarify things if there are any confusions and I'm sorry about them in advance. I'm 21 female and I have two siblings. My sister is 24 and engaged and my brother is 28 and married to my sister-in-law who's 25. My parents hosted a family luncheon to celebrate my sister's engagement at their house. I went early to help them set up. My brother and sister-in-law a little bit later than everybody else and my sister and her fiance arrived last. Everything was going well and everybody was happy until my sister got a text and pulled me aside. She asked me if I could go outside and meet a friend of hers who's gonna drop off something for her. I did. The something was a big ball of pure happiness, a Saint Bernard dog with a cute little formal tie around his neck. As adorable as he was, I couldn't bring him in because my sister-in-law is allergic. Her allergy is not severe, but still, everybody in the family knows about it. I told the friend to please wait while I talked to my sister. She did not. She texted my sister that I can't bring him inside. She texted that it was okay to bring it in because it's a surprise and he's the newest addition to the family. I insisted that I can't and then I texted my brother about it because it had been 10 minutes. I'm standing in the driveway with a big doggy that would not stop licking my legs, not knowing what to do. From what I was told, inside my brother pulled my sister aside and asked her to not bring the dog in. That she knows that his wife is allergic. She refused, saying that it was an open space, that sister-in-law will be fine. He then told her the news that sister-in-law is pregnant. I already knew that and they were waiting until she passed her first trimester. My sister then went outside and dragged the dog and then me in when I resisted. My brother, seeing this, excused himself and left with sister-in-law. We tried resuming the lunch after that, but it was awkward at best. When my sister and her fiancé cut the cake, she grabbed her glass of champagne to make a toast. The toast was her rambling about how selfish my brother and his wife were, that they couldn't let her have one day to herself and had to ruin it and overshadow it, that they were not the first or last couple to get pregnant. Both of my parents tried to shush her, but she was on a roll and went on to call my sister-in-law an attention seeker that just had to give the family the first grandchild. I finally had enough and I told her that green isn't a good look on her and that she's gonna choke on her jealousy one day. Then I got up and left. She called me a on the way out. My mum called me after and told me that it was a bit harsh, even though she was harsher. She also suggested that the three of us, siblings, talk it out after things settle a bit. My dad is staying neutral. I haven't heard from relatives that were at the luncheon. Am I the a-hole? Yeah, this comment. Not the a-hole. Yeah, I'm not invited, but I'm wearing white to that wedding. And this comment under that one too. Not the a-hole. Your sister was being selfish and obviously has issues with your brother and sister-in-law. Icing on the cake was the comment about giving the family its first grandchild. You can only be nice and stay neutral for so long. No Nobody can fault you for snapping after that whole struggle with the dog and your sister's rant. This comment says, not the a-hole. Your sister did this deliberately to either harm your sister-in-law or chase her out so your sister could then complain and belittle her. This was a conscious setup that she was angry at being challenged on, especially when the pregnancy was mentioned. Note that you, brother or sister-in-law never mentioned the news to the guest there, avoiding overshadowing your sister's day. Yet she announces the news in a derogatory way, taking away the parents' option of announcing it for themselves. Your sister is vile and frankly, you need to tell your mother that she and your father need to step up and they need to tackle their appalling daughter. Challenge your mother on why she did not protect her daughter-in-law, on why instead of defending the victims of your sister's vendetta, your mother dismisses her behaviour to the point of, oh, just have a talk in a while and make up. Your sister, her daughter, tried to make your sister-in-law ill and then knowingly tried to risk the pregnancy, took away the parents' moment to announce their pregnancy at a later time and treated you like trash. OP, your sister dragged you into the house despite you resisting. How on earth can your mother condone that? Why does she not even address how others were treated, other than the one insult towards you at the end. Unfortunately, it seems like she was the favourite child, downplaying everything to benefit your sister. I'd seriously speak to your father separately from her, lay out the situation in clear terms and have him make a choice, explain that he can't keep on fence-sitting, as that is a side, one that passively supports this vindictive behaviour. Good luck, OP. Reach out to your brother and your sister-in-law. And OP said, my mum has always wanted us to talk our issues out, because at the end of the day, you're siblings. But yeah, that being said, I want to clarify that even though she dragged me, it does 
doesn't take much since I have the smaller stature of my siblings, so she didn't use a lot of force. I did call my brother and sister-in-law right after I got home, and they were good for the most part. They're obviously pissed, but since the news is already out, there's not much that can be done about it. Yeah, like the comment below that says, I have the smaller stature of my siblings, so she didn't use a lot of force. This does not make her actions okay. No, of course not. Oh, that's so awful. The top comment says, Oh honey, you are definitely not the a-hole. First off, your sister pulling that St. Bernard stunt at a family luncheon. Girl, she knew about the allergy, but instead of being a decent human, she chose chaos. That's like bringing a firework to a quiet night in. And then she had the nerve to drag the dog and you into the house, knowing full well of the situation. Nah, that's some diva behavior right there. As for your brother and his wife, they're not out here trying to steal her thunder. They're just living their life. Her being mad that somebody else has a big moment, and let's be real, it's a baby, not a new handbag, is straight up petty. And that toast? It sounds like she was throwing a jealousy tantrum, not making a speech, and calling you a after you threw down some truth. That's a classic case of can't handle the truth. You said what needed to be said. Sometimes folks do need a reality check. If your mum thinks it was too harsh, she probably didn't hear the full extent of what went down. And your dad staying neutral? Bless his heart, but neutrality in this mess ain't the vibe. When you do have that sibling chat, if you even bother, keep it real and remind your sister that other people can have good news and it doesn't make her any less special. But if she keeps on acting like a brat, maybe suggest that she should adopt some emotional maturity along with that Saint Bernard. Yeah, you're so not the a-hole OP and I feel like that's enough for today. Another wild episode. I hope you guys had a good time today. I've got a cute wholesome meme to show you before we go. Nessie, where are you? Hey Bob, where have you been old friend? It's been so long. Nobody believes in me anymore so I stayed away for a while. I still believe in you Nessie. I'll always believe in you. Thanks Bob, that means a lot. Wow, that's so cute. That was made by Abel Brian Media. Bob and Nessie. That's so beautiful. I have Bob and Bob believes in me. That's all that matters. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time today and if you did make sure you subscribe if you want to and the comment of the day today goes to scream tell ahead everybody wish me luck for my physics exam in a couple of hours doing my last bit of studying to Vinci. oh that's so awesome good luck and i hope it went well and thank you for studying to my videos i really appreciate the support hell yeah i'm sure you did a great job and thank you all for the support everybody i love making these episodes and i'm so happy that you guys enjoy them and yeah i'll see you in the next episode have a beautiful amazing rest of your day and you know what i'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!